I'm Jeff Fritz with Soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by David Solomon, the Chief High-Res Music Evangelist with CoBuzz. David, how are you today? Good. How are you, Jeff? I'm doing great. The The weather's hot. I understand you're in Atlanta, and you're, you're probably, it's probably warmer down there than it is in North Carolina. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't bother me. Uh, we've got this great thing here. Uh, it's air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't bother me really because uh, when I'm outside, I'm typically kayaking anyway on the river. So, okay. you know, I'm, I kind of like the, the warm weather. Yeah, I, I live live near the water too, the Intracoastal Waterway, and there's always a breeze on the water. It's it's a it's a nice feature of of being near the uh, either the ocean or the river or a lake or something. Yeah. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Cobuzz, and you know we were we were laughing a little bit before we got started. You know, I have to admit when the service came out, uh, I called it Cubuzz, and then I was corrected fairly quickly. Uh, by some of my colleagues, but my kids, who still use the service as well, they still call it Cubuzz, and as many times as I've corrected them, they just refuse to change. They they like Cubuzz, but <laughs> I do understand that the name is Cobuzz, correct? Cobuzz, yes, and it, that doesn't bother us uh, even in the least. It, people pronounce it so many different ways. We were just talking um, when we first got going. I was at Cedia. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. We hadn't even actually launched. We were supposed to launch in like October, and I think this was September. Um, and two guys were sitting outside of the, this open air restaurant at San Diego, right? So it's beautiful weather. And I'm walking by, and I'm listening to them. And the first thing I hear, I'm a little ways away from them. The guy's going, "It's Cubas," and the other the other guy's <laughs> going, "No, it's Cobus." And the other guy, the next guy's going, "Well, it could be." Quaybuzz, and, and the other guy's going, no, I think it's Cobuzz. And I mean, they were doing this for like 45 <laughs> seconds. And for the first time, I'm going, what a great name for a company. I, there's actually people here that are discussing how you pronounce the the brand name. Nobody even knew who we were back then, right? So yeah, those, those kinds of questions were asked uh, a whole lot during the first year. But these days, it's you would not believe the number of pronunciations we get from this thing. And <laughs> it just doesn't bother us. It's, it's oh, it, are you using Cubas? Uh, yeah, I love it. Great. Keep using Cubas. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, so talking about Cobas, uh, you know, I'm a heavy Cobas user. I love the service. Uh, it's on constantly, you know, not only on my high-end system uh, in my home, but also on my phone. It's just, it's just a staple for, um, it's just a, a, a daily companion, really, almost no matter where I am. Even if I'm caught in the car, I'm streaming it uh, to, my, to my audio system in the, uh, in the Toyota. So tell us about what's going on with Cobuzz these days. What's new? Um, how's the service doing? Just give, give me your, your impressions. Uh, we're, we're doing really good. Uh, we're meeting expectations, which, you know, that's always good. It's the company is from France. And, you know, when they came to the United States, they had, they had big, uh, big expectations, but we're, we're, we're hitting, we're hitting the numbers that they want to hit. But we're hitting them maybe a little differently than most of the other services. Um, it was really important to me that we support the audio industry. So in almost everything we do, we support the audio industry. We've got tons of, you know, playlists from, you know, Bowers and Wilkins and, uh, uh, I don't know, we got a ton of uh, clips. We just got a ton of manufacturers' playlists up. We support all the shows where every one of the audio shows because we feel that um, if the manufacturers do really well, we'll do well also. Uh, but then they'll all the manufacturers will be going, hey, you're in, you really need to get Cobus if you want to, you know, have the really the very best experience with music, and that has really really served us well. Um, there's a lot that actually does set the service apart, uh, Jeff, from from the other services out there, which there are actually a, a few, you know, pretty good ones. You know, even if you start with Spotify, that's not a bad. That's not a bad program. I mean, it's a, they do a lot of really cool stuff. But if you start looking at the resolution that they're that they're dealing with, they're at 320 kilobits per second. Um, and then, of course, the next uh, 
the next phase up or the next up step would be um, someone. I, I also actually brought Title into the United States in 2014 when they came, and they were the first company that came in and actually did up to. 1411 kilobits per second a good bit more than 320 but 1411 that equates to uh, uh, CD quality right and then Cobus comes along and they're doing like over uh, over 9500 kilobits per second up to 24192 so to begin with it's something that's never been done before but the exciting thing to me is I, I made this call 10 years ago I guess maybe yeah I guess it was about 10 years ago um, when we started realizing that you remember XM when it first came out, XM yeah, or series, yeah. they were streaming at like 64 kilobits per second. I can't even listen to someone talk <laughs> at 64 kilobits per second. It just drives me crazy because you get that whole horrible thing going. It's certainly not good for music, but then, you know, music took a nice little, uh, uh rise or the reproduction took a nice little rise and it went up to. 128 kilobits per second it's still not you know real good then it went to 192 i'm thinking well this is still not bad it's still not great but it's you know maybe like fm or something then it went to 256 with apple you remember that 256 kilobits per second and then this magical little uh magical little uh, uh service came out called mog and this was, this was, I think, before Spotify, and they were 320 kilobits per second. And then all of a sudden, you started to be able to see the path of the future. Oh, these, these things at some point are going to be obsolete. They're, they, we're going to be able to do this on streaming, and we did. And beyond that, it's not hard to go, well, what's next? Well, What's next was high resolution. So Cobus is, is up to 192 kilobits per second, and it is just glorious. Um, you've you've seen it, right? I mean, you've heard it, and and it really does sound incredible. So that's probably the biggest thing that we're doing right now. We we're doing the highest resolution that a record label, the record labels are delivering right now, um, all at about 15 bucks a month and that was the real key yeah it, it's incredible and you you hit a you hit upon a couple of things that i want to expand on first the playlist and i should let everybody know since this is this is the soundstage youtube channel that on almost all of the soundstage network product reviews you can actually see the writer's playlist for that review it will come up when uh, a reader clicks on the review and there will be a screenshot of the actual playlist so you'll be able to see exactly what the reviewer was listening to and if you want to duplicate that yourselves you can so uh, you know that's just a feature on soundstage but you were talking about the uh, the all the other playlists from different manufacturers and and things of that nature and it, it brings me to uh, another point I wanted to ask you about so my son uh, recently got his first pair of of real loudspeakers. He got a pair of SVS Prime wireless loudspeakers, and I've I've found that he really likes the the, the playlist. Um, particularly, you know, he, he actually looked up the SVS playlist on Cobuzz, and so he's been listening to to those tracks. And he really does seek out the high resolution tracks. Of course, you know, a little bit of prodding from his dad that you know it's going to give him better quality, but you know, he, he seems to be into it. So I wanted to ask you, uh, are you finding that some of your, your, your customers are the younger crowd that's gravitating towards high resolution music? Uh, some, um, it takes a little bit though, Jeff, uh, we lost a whole generation to MP3 and MP3. I mean, really, if you just listen to it, it doesn't sound bad, right? There's not a lot to really complain about unless you're I'm, I'm a sound man my whole life, so I complain about anything that's got to do with sound. But really, uh, yeah, there's not that much to complain about. So I've got my own experience, uh, the very, very similar to yours. I, I turned my son on. He's 17 years old. And I turned my son on to it to begin with. And this is, this is so likely to happen. Um, I, I said, what do you think? You know, like a day after. And he's going, yeah, you know, I can't really tell much difference. That's what he says to me. 
I'm, and, and I'm thinking, you're stabbing me in the heart here. Really? You, go <laughs> ahead. Take this pen. Just jam it in my eye because <laughs> I was a, but I kind of knew that was going to happen. But I also knew what was going to happen uh, once he got accustomed to listening to full and high resolution. So I waited. I bided my time. And I waited about six months. Called Noah up. Well, my system is, I've got, on my desktop, I didn't tell you this, but about a meter from each ear, I've got a big pair of Martin Logan um, electrostatic speakers that, okay. they're, I mean, they're like right here. If a gnat is flying through the sound stage when it's being recorded, I know what microphone he was closest to, but this thing is the most <laughs> high resolute system that you can imagine. I've got another one downstairs that's about the same. It's a, a, a Gail Sanders icon system. So both systems are really high resolute. So we listen to music from time to time. And, and uh, six months later, I call up No, and I'm going, so uh, how are you liking Cobus? He's 17 years old. That's fine, Dad. It's It's got music on it. You know, I wish it had... Uh, a couple more of my guys on there, but yeah, it's fine. I go, okay, well, hey, let's listen to the difference again. He said, well, I already told you I really don't hear much difference. And I'm going, okay, well, let, let's just do an experiment. So he comes up to my office. He sits down in front of my things. I put on his music. Um, I, I put it on Cobus. And he's going, yeah, man, that sounds that sounds really good because it really does. And then I'm going, okay, check this out. Boom. And I had it on Spotify. And he goes, well, hold on. What did, what did you do? And I went, well, I just went back to Spotify. You you can't hear the difference, right? He goes, go back. And so I went back. And then I go back to Spotify. I go back to, to GoBuzz. And, I'm, and, and he says to me something so honest. He goes, Dad, I don't know what it is, but the GoBuzz sound feels better to me. And that is exactly what it's like. If you let somebody, and there's so many tests going around that say, oh, here's the 16-bit uh, version, and here's the high-res version. Uh, and people listen to this thing for 10 or 15 seconds, and they go, well, I don't really hear much difference, so no. And they come up with all these graphs and charts why you shouldn't do anything above 16-bit. But if you ask that same person after they've listened to high-resolution audio for even really a short time, three, four months, and then ask them to go back, they all, it's easy to hear the difference at that point. Not to say that everything recorded in 24-bit is recorded well. They've got some stuff in 24-bit that should have never been in 24-bit. It's a more marketing than anything else, right? But if you get a once, if you get a skilled person doing a recording, whether it's a remaster or recording straight from the beginning in 24-bits, there's no comparison. You get a lot more information um, on a 24-bit recording than you do a than you do a 16-bit recording. And the engineers are learning how to do that now too, really well. Well, it, it's it's a really good experiment that you did with your son, and I did a similar experiment with my son when he got his new speakers. He's 14, and so the first thing that we did was we we brought up Cobuzz on his phone and we streamed some low resolution. Uh, Bluetooth to his speakers and he listened and then we brought up the PlayFi app which is what you use with the SVS speakers and we streamed some some high resolution co-buzz into his SVS speakers and instantly you know the same tracks he, he he heard a huge difference and he was hooked right then and there and uh, you know I, I think one of the things that's that's you know really good particularly for the younger people is they can you know, with some of the new products, they can stream high resolution right into their sound system. And it's not a cumbersome, you know, like, you know, in the old days, it's just, it's not a cumbersome endeavor to do that. And I think that's one thing that will help sell high resolution to the younger crowd is it's better and it's just as easy. Well, yeah. And, and if you just leave people to their own devices, many times they won't uh, seek out uh, better things, but we just opened up a family plan about a maybe maybe a month ago, and so what's happening now is well, what would happen before is like dad or the audiophile in the family, the person that really cared the most about music, the person that sat there and listened to music actively. They were typically the ones that had a Cobus account, and then you would not believe how many people that I got uh, that, were, that were telling me that, well, I've got Cobus, but my family, I've got them on the family plan of Spotify, which, you know, that kind of makes sense. But now that we've got the family plan, we're just now starting to get a bunch of young people on this. So 
I'm not going to do anything right now. I'm going to wait, but I think I'm going to wait about three months and then I'm going to start doing these, these experiments going, okay, now can you hear the difference? Because that is when people will be able to tell the difference. That's sort of the one, that's sort of one thing. I think the world is just going to high res because there's really no reason not to. In fact, we dropped our whole MP3 level. There's no reason technically for MP3s to exist. Uh, there's just not. Um, we've got plenty of space. We've got plenty of bandwidth. So why would you have something that was developed to um, to solve those problems that are no longer problems? That really does degrade music. Um, I see no reason for it. The only reason for it is going to be price because the record labels still um, sell uh, – um, they still, uh, I'm trying to think where I was going with that. Oh, they still sell a lot of their MP3 stuff to MP3 providers like uh, Spotify or like uh, Pandora or those kinds of companies. And they are less expensive for those companies to buy. It's the only reason that they should, that they even exist right now. Because like I say, from a technical standpoint, why would you listen to 320 kilobits per second when you could be listening to over 9,500 kilobits per second? That would be like, why watch, you know, why watch television on one of those 1950s, you know, round black and white TVs when you've got 4K? I mean, nobody would do that. <laughs> it, it makes a lot of sense. And I think we don't give young people enough credit. You know, if you're right, if they're left to, to their own devices, maybe they don't find it. But when you can do the A-B demo and they hear it, better is better. You know, you, you don't you don't know that. Uh, you know, a better pizza down the down the road at this other pizza place exists until you go and you try it, and then you realize, hey, this is better than what I'm used to, right? So I think I think we have to give people, particularly young people, give them the benefit of the doubt that if they hear something better, they're going to prefer it. And and I know that that's true with uh, with my son, and it sounds like your son as well. So you know, there's a sample size of two, <laughs> of two that we can draw from at least. Well, your son has got a really that 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 is a uh, very good little system there. I wish something like that would have been available when I was a kid. I would have you know given my left arm for a pair of SVS primes when I was 14 years old, and I was listening to maybe a Magnavox console with an eight track, you know, built in cause we were that cool. Um, but it's gotten a whole lot better. And to your point, it's so much easier when your son can go, I want to listen to, you know, whatever he's listening to. And, and there, there's a button there. We couldn't do that. Yeah, We'd go no, to the record true. store. We'd go to the record store. We'd buy our two albums that week. We'd come back home. We'd wear those things out. We'd go back. We'd buy two more. Now I open up this, this, magic device and every single week i've got like like four or five six hundred albums and like 80 percent of them in, are in high resolution jeff i feel like i'm drinking from a hydrant it's it's yeah. there's so much music there right so well and i have to i have to make one more confession this was probably maybe about a month ago uh we were we were listening in the car and I think my daughter had my phone and she said, dad, why aren't you using CoBuzz's dark mode? And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so she puts dark mode on and all of a sudden it's easier for me to read. And, and uh, so, yeah, there's, there's, there's all kind of features in CoBuzz that are just, uh, that are fantastic. And, you know, sometimes it's the older folks turning on the young people to these things. And, you know, in that case, it was my kid showing me that, there's an option to to turn Cobuzz into dark mode, uh, which is is actually easier for me to read and navigate. Yeah, the kids love that, and they figure that kind of stuff out like that. You know, they figure it figure <laughs> it out really quick. No, it's the same way. He's got his on dark mode. Yeah. I'm just some old guy that loves music, so I've still got mine on light mode. And I I don't think the only reason I can be at the cool kids table is because I turned him on to Cobuzz. Period. That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, last question for you, David. Uh, you know, since the the lockdown, people have uh, they've been chiming in with all types of new music and new musical experiences. You know, a lot of people have more time at home. I wanted to ask you, what is your favorite recent listening experience? Oh wow! Uh, see, I listen every day, almost all day. But there are a few standouts. I think uh, the Black Pumas. Have you heard those guys yet? No. They will 
it, it's instant classic. It's real, real throwback, uh, sort of Al Green kind of almost stuff, right? Along those same lines, there's another group. Uh, I just listened to their their live album today, the Teskey Brothers. Sort of the same um, throwback feel. Almost feels like you're listening to a mid '60s, you know, Stax Motown recording, right? It's that kind of feel. Uh, it's new, but it's old. I love their stuff though. Um, Black Pumas, uh, maybe a little more modern, but man, what a sweet, soulful sound those guys have got. Another uh, group has been, um, let's see, Ida May. Ida May is incredible. She's got a new album called Chasing Lights, and uh, that's another just really, really good one. Uh, another good band, new band, uh, kind of new band called Royal Blood. Uh, been really into them and I could keep going on like this forever because there's just I, that's what I do I listen to music like you wouldn't believe and then there's these old things that you get that you go oh yeah I forgot about that uh, the original Fleetwood Mac do you know mm. this album you know it, people think of you know rumors when they think of Fleetwood Mac Fleetwood Mac started out as a blues band and they were sloppy and they were soulful and they just felt so much fun. I love the original Fleetwood Mac. I've gotten reacquainted with that. Uh, J.J. Gray, who is like so soulful. There's another one that's a band called Mofro. And it's like uh, Swamp Funk. Like New Orleans Swamp okay. Funk. Kind of like a... a, a John Cleary, but not as refined. And then, of course, you know, got to be listening to the funkadelic stuff. They've, they've got, you know, some great stuff. And then we got Tool, and all the Tool stuff we got is all in uh, high resolution and quite incredible. We're getting so much cool, cool stuff in high resolution, even the Beatles collection. And um, it's just almost just, like I say, not only listening to it is like you know drinking from a fire hydrant just even trying to talk about it is is absolutely next to impossible because while i've already talked about a whole bunch of music that is just such the surface of what's you know what's going on and, and what i've been listening to the carpenters they've got uh one of their recordings out uh they were it's called singles from 69 to 81 you remember Karen's voice. Yeah. There's not another voice on planet Earth that's as pure and sweet as Karen Carpenter. That album will make your little hair stand up. It's it's uh, in 24, uh, I think it's in, it's either 96 or 192. It doesn't really matter. But when you listen to the equivalent 16-bit version of that, just like we were talking about before, the emotion is just not there. And it's like, I could not wait till we got that. So we finally ended up getting this album in high res and... And I was a, a happy camper because I'd bought it for a good bit of money, I don't know, three or four years ago, uh, just so that I could have that album. And and then there's the 50s jazz, you know, uh, uh, what's Kenny, Be Kenny, Kenny Burrell, um, uh, Midnight Blue. It's in high res and it's glorious. Or Illinois Jacket, the one that was released in 1957, which is called... Um, the swing of things. His saxophone is in the room with you when you're listening to this thing. So, yeah, there's so much good stuff on Cobuzz. And, and well, uh, and that's the great thing about Cobuzz and just having all this music at your fingertips is you don't have to search hard to find it. And it's right there and you can discover it or rediscover it. And it just leads to just such long... Uh, just really satisfying listening sessions and I, I love the service and love what you guys are doing well thanks Jeff I appreciate it just know that there are um, there's still recordings that we're missing they're still in line uh, we started off with about 40 million I think we're up to about 52 million at this point we've you know still got a few million more uh, but uh, you know when you're when you're giving us a shout just just know or there's the 30-day trial you can try uh just know that we will eventually end up getting everything we just got lyle love it in last week i mean i would oh. think yeah i mean that's that's how much we're catching up but you know you just gotta remember we're the we're the newest service um and uh although we're not 
I caught up there, we are so much better than we were two years ago. And you can like look at the light at the end of the tunnel and go, hey, it's a light at the end of the tunnel, not an oncoming train. <laughs> Well, David, thank you so much, and uh, good luck to you guys. And and like I said, uh, I know the soundstage guys just love Cobuzz, and uh, good luck to the service and to you personally, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks very much, Jeff. Bye-bye. Take care.